3201. Notwithstanding 3218, no judgment by confession shall be entered on an affidavit which was executed prior to the time a default in the payment of installment occurs in connection with the purchase of $1,500 or less of any commodities for any use other than a commercial or business use upon any plan of deferred payments whereby the price or cost is payable in two or more installments. Any judgment entered in violation of this section is void and unenforceable. Skipping to 3218, judgment by confession. Affidavit of de A, affidavit of defendant, except as provided in 3201, a judgment by confession may be entered without an action, either for money due or to become due, or to secure the plaintiff against a contingent liability in behalf of the defendant, or both, upon an affidavit executed by the defendant, one, stating the sum for which judgment may be entered, authorizing entry of judgment, stating the county where a defendant resides, or if he is a non-resident, the county in which entry is authorized, two, if the judgment to be confessed is for money due or to become due, stating concisely the facts out of which the debt arose and showing that the sum confessed is justly due or to become due, and three, if the judgment to be confessed is for the purpose of securing the plaintiff against a contingent liability, stating concisely the facts constituting the liability and showing that the sum confessed does not exceed the amount of the liability. B. Entry of judgment. At any time within three years after the affidavit is executed, it may be filed with the clerk of the county where a defendant stated in his affidavit that he resided when it was executed or if defendant was a non-resident with the county clerk designated an affidavit. Thereupon, the clerk shall enter a judgment in the Supreme Court for the sum confessed. He shall tax costs to the amount of $15 besides disbursements taxable in an action. The judgment may be docketed and enforced in the same manner and with the same effect as a judgment in an action in the Supreme Court. No judgment of confession may be entered after defendant's death. C. Execution where judgment is not all due. Where the debt for the defendant, where the, I'm sorry, where the debt for which the judgment is entered is not all due, execution may be issued only for the sum which has become due. The execution shall be in the form prescribed for an execution upon a judgment for the full amount recovered, except that it shall direct the sheriff to collect only the sum due, stating the amount with interest and the costs of the judgment, period. Notwithstanding the issuance and collection of such an execution, the judgment shall remain in force as security for the sum or sums to become due after the execution is issued. When further sums become due, further executions may be issued in the same manner. D. Confession by joint debtors. One or more joint debtors may confess to a judgment for a joint debt due or to become due. Where all the debtors do not unite in the confession, the judgment shall be entered and enforced against only those who confessed it, and it is not a bar to an action against the other joint debtors upon the same demand. So now skipping back to 32, uh, 11. Motion to dismiss. This is um, the grounds that can be asserted in the motion to dismiss, and these grounds are the ones that are not waived in the event that the defendant doesn't raise it in his motion to dismiss. Subject matter jurisdiction, lack of subject matter jurisdiction rather, the pleading fails to state a cause of action, or non-joinder, non and those are um, in subdivisions A and 2, 7, and 10. Okay, so the, the rest of them, um, most of them are going to be waived if the defense is not raved, raised in a response of pleading or a motion to dismiss. So that is defense not, um, there is defense founded upon documentary evidence, or two, The party asserting the cause of action lacks the capacity to sue, or 
another action pending between the same parties for the same cause of action in any court of the United States or any state. But however, the court need not dismiss upon this ground, but may make such order as justice requires, or action may not be maintained because of arbitration and award, collateral estoppel, discharge and bankruptcy, infancy, or other disability of the moving party, payment, release, res judicata, statute of limitations, or statute of frauds. Or with respect to a counterclaim, it may not be may not properly be interposed in the action or court does not have personal jurisdiction or court does not have jurisdiction in an action where service was made under 314 or 315 or the party is immune from liability because of not-for-profit corporation law um <sighs> It says a lot of information in the presumptive evidence of the status may consist of a production from the IRS, a letter from the IRS stating that they're um, a nonprofit. B. Motion to dismiss defense. A party may move for judgment dismissing one or more defenses on the ground that a defense is not stated or has no merit. C. Evidence permitted immediate trial. Motion treated as one for summary judgment. Upon the hearing of a motion under subdivision A or B, so that's to dismiss defense or to, to dismiss an action, either party may submit any evidence that could properly be considered on a motion for summary judgment. Whether or not issue has been joined, the court, after adequate notice to the parties, may treat the motion as a motion for summary judgment. The court may, when appropriate for the expeditious disposition of a controversy, Order immediate trials of the issues raised on the motion. C. Facts unavailable to opposing party. Should it appear from affidavit submitted in opposition to a motion made under sub A or B, so to dismiss the case or dismiss defense, that facts essential to justify opposition may exist but cannot be stated, the court may deny the motion, allowing the moving party to assert the objection in his response of pleading, if any or may order a continuance to permit further affidavits to be obtained or disclosure to be had and make such other order as may be just. E, number of time and waiver of objections, motion to plead over. Plead over, it says. At any time before service of a response to pleading is required, a party may move on one or more grounds in sub A and no more than one such motion shall be permitted any objection or defense based upon a ground set forth in paragraphs one three four five and six of subdivision a 32 11 is waived unless raised either by such motion or in a responsive pleading in the response pleading a motion based upon a ground specified in paragraph two seven or ten may be made at any time subsequent or in a later pleading if one is permitted and objections that the summons a complaint summons with notice notice of petition and petition was not properly served is waived if having raised sub such objection in the pleading the objecting party does not move for judgment on that ground within 60 days after service of after serving the pleading unless the court extends the time upon the ground of undue hardship. The foregoing sentence shall not apply to 711 of the RPAPL. Papers in opposition to a motion based upon improper service shall contain a copy of the proof of service, whether or not previously filed. So, um, you have to put the affidavit of service in your opposite in your op. And, uh, um, an objection based upon a ground specified in paragraph eight or nine of subdivision A is waived if a party moves on any of the grounds set forth in sub A without raising such objection, or if having made no 
objection under subdivision A, he does not raise such objection in the response of pleading. F. Extension of time to plead. Service of a notice of motion under sub A or B before service of a response of pleading. Oh, okay, let me start over. Service of a notice of motion under sub A or B before service of a pleading responsive to the cause of action or defense sought to be dismissed extends the time to serve the pleading until 10 days after service of notice of entry of the order. So if you don't succeed on the motion to dismiss and the court um, makes that decision, you have 10 days after service of notice of entry of the order denying your motion on you to serve your response of pleading. Or, and the same goes for the motion to dismiss defense. You would have 10 days after service of the order to serve your reply. G. Standards for motion to dismiss in cases involving public petition and participation. A motion to dismiss based on paragraph 7, so that's um, fails to state a cause of action, in which the moving party has demonstrated that the action, claim, cross-claim, or counterclaim subject to the motion is an action involving public participation, uh, sorry, public petition and participation, and part, uh, as, as defined in the civil rights law, shall be granted unless the party responding to the motion demonstrates that the cause of action has a substantial basis in law or is supported by a substantial argument for extension modification or reversal of existing law. The court shall grant a preference in the hearing of such a motion. Okay, so then here we go with H. Standards, uh, this is about the licensed architects. Motion to dismiss based on failed state of cause of action in which the moving party has demonstrated it is the uh, type of action there a notice of claim must be served on a licensed architect, engineer, land surveyor, or landscape architect shall be granted unless the party responding to the motion demonstrates there is a substantial basis in law exists to believe that the performance, conduct, or omission complained of such architect, engineer, land surveyor, or landscape architect, or such firm as set forth in the notice of claim was negligent and that such performance, conduct, or omission was a proximate cause of personal injury, wrongful death, or property damage complained of by the claimant or supported by a substantial argument for an extension, modification, or reversal of existing law. The court shall grant a preference in the hearing of such motion. So the two preference ones are public petition and participation civil rights law and the landscape architect thing. And um, this one is very long too, 32 12. So. Let me try to get 32.13 in here. When an action is based upon an instrument for the payment of money only or upon any judgment, the plaintiff may serve with summons and a notice of motion for summary judgment and supporting papers in lieu of a complaint. So this is when an action is based upon an instrument for the payment of money only or upon any judgment, he can serve summons in lieu of complaint. The motion served with the summons served with the motion papers shall require a defendant to submit answering papers on the motion within the time provided in the notice of motion. Minimum time such motion shall be noticed to be heard um, shall be in the shall be the time for making um, an appearance. So it's not the motion rules; it's the, the same time you get to actually make an appearance. If plaintiff sets hearing date for motion later than minimum time, he may require. Defendants serve a copy of his answering papers upon him within such limiting time, not exceeding 10 days prior to hearing date. No default judgment may be entered pursuant to 3215 sub A prior to hearing date of motion. If motion is denied, moving and answering papers shall be deemed the complaint and answer, respectively, unless the court orders otherwise. So, yeah, a lot in there.